across the nation for free as soon as they're available. So we've responded by putting the health of America first. And we'll continue to do it until we put this coronavirus in the past. Where Joe Biden is talking about shutting down the economy again, under President Donald Trump, we are opening up America. It's amazing to think, in the last five months, we've seen more Americans go back to work than actually went to work when Joe Biden was vice president for eight years. 11.4 million Americans back to work, including nearly 600,000 people right here in the Keystone State. We're opening up America again. And we are opening up America's schools. I'm proud to report to you that school teacher I've been married to for 35 years, she's already back in the classroom at that Christian school. We provided billions of dollars available to our schools, and we just sent out 100 million rapid care tests to school nurses around America so we can get our kids back in the classroom and keep them back safe and sound where they belong. So we're opening up America. We're opening up America's schools, thanks to President Trump's leadership. Big Ten football is back, too. One week from today, at 3.30, Nittany Lions are going to be back on the gridiron. You know, I got to tell you, It is really great to be here in Pennsylvania with you all. You're just amazing people. Thank you so much for coming out. We love you. But I got to tell you, men and women, we got a choice ahead of us. When you look at their agenda, it's clear. Joe Biden would be nothing more than a Trojan horse for the radical left. I mean, truthfully. Joe Biden has said that democracy is on the ballot. And I think our economic recovery is on the ballot. Law and order are on the ballot. But I also think there's things far more foundational to our country that are on the ballot come November the 3rd. You know, in this election, I think it's not going to be so much whether America ends up more Republican or more Democrat more liberal or more conservative, more red or more blue. I think the choice in this election is whether America remains America. It's whether we're going to chart a course on freedom and patriotism and all the ideals that have always made this country great, or whether we're going to let Joe Biden, the Democrats, and the radical left steer us on an inexorable path to socialism and decline. So for our freedom, and for all the values that have always made America great, we need to decide right here and right now that Joe Biden will never be President of the United States. We're going to re-elect President Donald Trump for four more years. That's the choice we face, everybody. I believe it with all my heart. And I also want to tell you, you know, four years ago, when, uh, when I got the call to join this ticket, I actually didn't know our president very well at all. We'd met a couple of times. But I saw in him, as all of you did, the vision and the leadership qualities 
that could make America great again. And I joined that ticket in a heartbeat. But I'll never forget the night that he called. My wife and I got tipped off that uh, among a group of wonderful, great Americans that uh, we were going to get, we were going to get the ask. We prayed all the way through it. We knew what answer we were going to give. The greatest honor of our life. And I was standing in my study at the at the governor's residence in Indiana. The phone rang at about 11 o'clock, and with my wife standing at my side, I picked up the phone. I heard that familiar voice, and he said, Mike, it's going to be great. And he was right. Every step of the way, we've been making America great again. And I can tell you, I mean, some people think the President and I are a little bit different. But honestly, we've gotten to be really close friends. We talk every day when we're in different places, and we spend a lot of time together at the White House. So let me tell you firsthand, I've seen it through an unrelenting opposition by Democrats in Washington, D.C., through continuous barrages of attacks from their allies in the national media. There's not a day gone by that President Trump hasn't gotten up and fought to keep the promises that he made to the people of Pennsylvania. Now it's our turn to fight for him. It's on, Pennsylvania. So I got a couple things to ask you to do before I get back on the plane. First, I need you to vote Pennsylvania and vote for four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. I May mean, I checked on the way here? You can request an absentee ballot until October 27th. Better still. Come Monday morning, mark your calendar. You can go down to the County of Burke Service Center, open 8 to 5, 633 Court Street, right here in Reading, and vote to reelect President Donald Trump. And remember, friends don't let friends vote alone. Bring a family member, bring a friend, bring a coworker, and vote for four more years of President Donald Trump in the White House. And number two, after you're done voting with a friend, I need you to go tell somebody. Tell somebody why you, why you feel so proud of supporting this president and of everything we've accomplished. I can tell looking out at all of you that you know the progress that we've made in this country, but you know it's just the beginning. I just want to tell all of you. You know, back in that election four years ago, I was actually on one of those Sunday morning shows. It was a couple weeks before the election. Hillary Clinton that week was literally announcing that she was, uh, she was announcing a list of cabinet appointments. She was measuring the curtains in the Oval Office. And back then, if you remember, back then, if you remember, all the polls back then were like, they were all different kinds of polls. Some where we were losing by a lot and some where we were losing by a little, right? It was the whole range. So I'm on this TV show and this guy, the Sunday morning show, the president calls him sleepy. He looked at me and he said, almost in a sympathetic tone, he said, two weeks before the election, he said, so what do you think's going to happen? You know? And I looked at him and I said, I think we're going to win. 
And he had this shocked look on his face. You think we're going to win? Why? And I said, because I'm, I'll tell you what, I said, I, I've seen our candidate out across the country, the tens of thousands of people that were coming out, believing in his vision, believing in his leadership qualities. And I said, and I've seen the literally hundreds of Americans that have come out when I've campaigned as well. And on every one of their faces, I see the same confidence, the same determination. And I knew you all were going to deliver a great victory. Not just for President Donald Trump, but you delivered a victory for America in 2016 because you were talking to each other. You know, the most powerful media in America is now and always has been word of mouth. It's not your big newspapers. It's not your television networks. It's not your social media. It's when someone who knows you and respects you hears from you about everything we've done for this country and everything that we can continue to do to keep making America greater and stronger than ever before. So I need you to get out and talk to people at worship, at work, every day in the next 17 days. It'll make a difference. And one other thing I might ask you to do. If you're of a mind to bow the head and bend the knee over the next two weeks, I encourage you to do that too. You know, as I've traveled around America, there's two things that I've become convinced of over the last four years. America is a freedom-loving nation, and America is a nation of faith. So I encourage you to, I encourage you to pray. Seems like that, that little girl at the end of my debate asked a question of both of us about the division that she sees on television. But I, I'll always believe that there, there will always be more that unites us in these United States of America than could ever divide us. And chief among those things is faith. So in the days ahead, I'd encourage you to pray for America. Pray for all the American people. And when you pray, pray with confidence. In those ancient words that Americans have clung to in much more challenging times than we could even imagine, that if his people, who are called by his name, will humble themselves and pray and turn, he'll do like he's always done in the long and storied history of this nation. He'll hear from heaven, and he'll heal this land. This one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So pray for America, Pennsylvania. It'll make a difference. So it's great to be back in the Commonwealth, but I got a plane to catch. And I'll catch it. But not before I don't say thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you for coming out today. Thank you for supporting our president and all of those that have stood with us. It's always an honor for me to be in Pennsylvania. As the president said in Johnstown on Wednesday, Pennsylvania is a place where the Continental Army weathered its brutal winter at Valley Forge. For George Washington, led his daring man on a trip across the Delaware. It's where our nation was saved by the heroes of Gettysburg. Pennsylvania is a special place. Generations of tough, strong people who worked the mines, worked the railroads, forged the steel that made America the greatest and most powerful nation in the history of the world. That is the past of Pennsylvania. That is the present of Pennsylvania. And that is the future of Pennsylvania and America. And I leave here today with renewed confidence that if all of us do all that we can, on every day between now and election, 
We're going to have a great victory right here in Pennsylvania and all across America. With your continued support, with your voice, to your neighbors and friends, and with your prayers. We're going to make Pennsylvania and America stronger than ever before. We're going to make Pennsylvania and America more prosperous than ever before. We're going to make Pennsylvania and America more united than ever before. And with Congressman Lloyd Smucker and Congressman Dan Muser in a new Republican majority in the House of Representatives, with President Donald Trump in the White House for four more years, and with God's help, we're going to make America great again. Again. Thank you all very much.